I'm just gonna put it out there, I have a major bag fetish. When you travel with camera gear as much as I do, it's a never-ending search for the perfect bag. That one special pack that will do everything you need it to do. The perfect camera bag should be lightweight, indestructible, waterproof, customizable, look great, and be super cheap. Unfortunately, that bag doesn't exist. But the good news is, at least for what I do, I found one company that makes what I think are quite possibly the best all-round packs for documentary filmmakers in the world. And in this video, I'm gonna go over what I look for in a production bag, some of the different brands I've tried, and what I now consider to be the best of the bunch. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, documentary cinematographer and filmmaker. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned in over 10 years of working in the documentary photography and film industries. Let me give you a quick history of my obsession with camera bags. I've owned pretty much every kind of bag there is over the years, and most of them I still have now. When I was a photojournalist, I didn't carry so much gear, and so I could get away with small belt packs and little backpacks. But once I got out of the stills market and moved into documentary video production, I needed something a little more specialized to deal with all the extra gear that filmmakers need to carry. Now just to be clear, in this video I'm not talking about the bags I used to travel with, like the cases and roller bags that I pack things into when I'm going to the airport. I'm talking about the bag that I use day to day on a shoot after the camera has been built and everything's been unpacked, the bag that comes with me into the field and holds the lenses, batteries, or whatever else I think I might need to access quickly. For getting from point A to point B, you can't go wrong with a Pelican case, and I have a couple of these. They're indestructible and they'll keep your stuff safe in any environment, but they're super heavy, hard to organize organized and difficult to carry. If you want something a little less rugged but a bit more functional, maybe a step up from that would be something like a Think Tank roller bag. These aren't cheap, but they have amazing build quality, the insides are customizable, and they usually don't look like camera bags. I have one of these things and I use it to get through the airport, but it also comes with me in the production vehicle uh, to hold stuff like tools, monitors, accessories, small lights, or other things I might use, but just not all the time. It's great if you're gonna shoot interviews in an urban environment and need to bring more than you can pack into a backpack, but as soon as you can't use the wheels, like in a remote environment, or if you need to get into a boat or a helicopter, it's a bit too bulky. Now, once you start shooting in the real world and you have to move around, you're gonna need a backpack. I spent hours on the internet trying to find the perfect camera backpack, and I could never make up my mind, until one day my good friend and one of the world's best adventure cameramen, Pablo Durana, told me that he started using a bag called F-Stop. He pulled some strings and got one of their Tilopa packs sent to me. And I have to say that after two years of using it on pretty much every shoot, I'm convinced this really is the world's best documentary filmmaking backpack. Full disclosure, like I said, I got the pack for free. But that was two years ago, and so far I've done no advertising for them at all, not even an Instagram post. They gave me the bag because Pablo's a badass, not because they wanted advertising from me. Since then, I've bought more of their stuff with my own money, so this is not a sponsored video by any means. Just want to get that out of the way. So what do I need in a daily carry production bag, and why are f-stop bags so good at it? The first thing is that it needs to hold a lot of stuff. I wish I was one of those guys who could get away with a mirrorless camera and a couple of lenses plus a drone in a tiny backpack and still do my job. When I shot stills, I prided myself on traveling with carry-on luggage only and I hate how much stuff I have to carry now. But with shoulder-mounted cameras like the FX9 and all the accessories, there's just no way around it. You need more stuff. On a normal day, I'd probably carry my two Fuji MK Cine Zooms, a 70-200, at least one Fast Prime, and maybe a 100mm macro as well. I'd probably also need between three and six V-mount batteries to get through the day, depending on how easy it is to access the production vehicle. And I would try and carry a couple small lights, something like an Aperture MC or an Aladdin A-Light, because you never know. On top of that, I'd have my AC pouch, like this, uh, something that has all sorts of tools, like Leatherman, Allen keys, uh, rocket blower, or whatever else I need to keep the camera rig clean and working well. I'll make a separate video soon on how to build one of these for yourself. They're super helpful at every stage of your career and every DP should have one. I'll probably also have a drone with me, usually a Mavic Pro or the Air 2S that I've been using a lot lately. And lastly, throw in a couple of snacks, maybe a light rain jacket and a water bottle, and that should probably be good for at least a scene or two without ever going back to the van. F-Stop bags use a system of different sized pouches that they call ICUs that you can mix and match with different bags depending on what you're carrying. I have four or five of these things from small to large and I'm constantly changing up the configuration for each shoot. With the Tilopa, the large IC will hold all my lenses and batteries, with enough room left over at the top for a drone and my tools, and the front and side pockets are more than enough to hold a rain jacket, some snacks, and a water bottle. When it's time to go back to the airport, I just pull the ICU out, throw a strap on it, and use it like a carry-on. The pack then folds flat and goes into a duffel with my tripod and light stands. 
So the bag is definitely big enough for any reasonable shoe. Though if you're doing crazy expedition style stuff, um, they also have bigger ones. I think it's called the Shin, which is 80 liters. But a bag is no good to me if it can't keep all my stuff safe and protected. S-Stop stuff kills it in this department. They're built more like high-end hiking packs with super tough fabric, good zippers, um, solid rain covers. And the one that I use even has internal metal rods that give the whole thing extra structure. The ICU system also means that your stuff is inside a padded case inside the backpack, so it's like a bag within a bag. I also love that the part that opens is the part that sits against your back. This means you can drop it in the dirt on the weatherproof side and get at your stuff without worrying about it getting wet or covered in mud. As an added bonus, it means that no one can get into your bag while you're wearing it, so it's also a good choice for walking through big cities. Short of using a Pelican case, which is pretty much impossible to carry, I don't think there's much more I could ask for in terms of protection and waterproofing in a practical package. It's super solid and made to last a really long time. The only real downside of these bags is the price. Even though I got one for free, I also bought one myself, so I get it, they are not cheap. Depending on the accessories you get, the Tilopa could cost over 500 US dollars, and that's some serious money for a bag. If you think that's insane, I totally hear you. I mean, you can get an entry-level camera for that price, but in the long run, it's gonna be much cheaper than buying a discount bag and replacing it every year or two when the zippers blow out or the straps break. And from an environmental perspective, uh, it's so much better to just get one bag that you can use for five or 10 years than constantly getting new stuff. A friend once said to me, I'm too poor to buy cheap stuff. And that's always stuck with me, especially since I make 100% of my income from film production. Another way to say it is buy nice or buy twice. And I'm definitely a believer in that. So if you're in the market for a bag, I'd highly suggest saving up for one of these and you'll be able to keep it for a really long time. I've used mine on some seriously rough shoots from bat caves in Kenya to mountaintops to the Mexican desert. And apart from some dirt streaks, it looks the same as it did when it came out of the box. This bag has already outlasted multiple camera systems and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be with me for a long time still. And it looks good too. Some people might say this doesn't matter, but to me, it absolutely does. I don't want some nerdy space pack looking thing when I'm in a difficult environment. And if I think something looks stupid, I'm probably not gonna use it. I just got back from a three month shoot on a survival show and all the mountain guide safety crew dudes were complimenting me on how good it looked. Call me vain, but that matters to me. So good job whoever designs these backpacks. There's so many more things I could say about this bag, like the cool keychain design or the hardcore buckles that I've stepped on with my full body weight without breaking, but I wanna keep this video to a reasonable length, so I'm gonna cut it here before I come off as a total fanboy. If you're gonna shoot documentaries, you're going to need to carry your stuff. It's as simple as that. And for someone like me who has an entire industrial shelving unit plus a closet full of bags, I don't think you can go wrong with F-stop stuff. I personally think the Tilopa is the perfect size for most shoots, but I also have the much smaller Guru bag for when I need to be light on my feet. And I'm going to get the big 80 liter shin this summer, I think, if one of my projects gets green lit. These really are amazing backpacks, and in my opinion, they're the best in class for documentary filmmakers. Let me know what you use in the comments below. If you like that video, why not try another one about my favorite piece of gear of all time, my tripod that actually stopped a bullet in Mexico. See ya.